can you give us your assessment of just how, how the team did in that? And, you know, what was it like for you guys having to sort of sit there and watch what was effectively largely your team going in this incredible run? Was there any a wee bit of jealousy there that you, you weren't there to sample that against uh, Seville? No, nah, no jealousy. I was just so proud. I, like, we had a Rangers party in my house with my children. We got balloons and everything So for the final. So it was just real pride, pride for the players. Listen, they were fulfilling what I thought they could fulfil. You know, that's the big thing, the players that came in. You're telling them they can fulfill this. And sometimes maybe when they first come, they're looking at you like you're crazy. But then they've gone on and achieved that now. They were so unlucky on the night. But maybe that's encompassing with Scottish teams in Europe in general. You know, so close, but yet so far away. One kick of a ball. I was so proud. I followed the journey. Um, I think Gio's done a great job. It's his team now. It's certainly his team when I watch them play and the way that they play. And I think that he can... He can be hugely proud of, of the achievement of getting to the final and getting so close and albeit take the frustration into this season, into domestic. I think Ange has done a really good job. He's ever such a nice guy. Um, I think he's done a good job, but I don't see anyone stronger than others. I'm biased, but I still see the Rangers squad as a stronger squad. And just finally for me, just, I mean, you, you talk about that pride there. I mean, when you... So I look at the, the state of the club when you guys went in and to see, you know, what, four or five years later than the, the final of the Europa League. I mean, does that just sort of sum up the sort of work that you guys did to, you know, put, put the club back on a path to, to where it should be? I think what, what it is, is we had a vision and we recruited towards that vision and we stayed strong when we had some difficult moments. If you go back to Stephen's first interview about bumps in the road, there was a few big bumps along the way, but we stayed strong with our ideas. Um, we didn't listen to the background noise and we recruited for a system. You think of some of the recruiting that we did and, and the prices that we paid um, for them players like your Glenn Kamara's, your Calvin Bassies and your Joe Aribos. And at times, you know, we, we've had to go through the wave of them players' development, but they've certainly come out the other side and give good value for that now. I think... Rangers is in a very, very strong position in terms of the current squad and how the club is viewed outside compared to where it was when Stephen started in 2018. And that's all you can do as a manager and a coach. And I think a lot said when you leave clubs, um, but I think they'll always, for everyone that was there, have a part of Rangers as part of us moving forward now. Just Obviously, the Rangers have got their, their Champions League qualifiers coming up and it's, it's a huge you know, point in the season for the team. Just looking back 12 months ago to Malmo, can you just give us a wee sort of insight into just how, you know, disruptive going out early was and, and the sort of, you know, the thoughts at the time and just uh, the stage of season to, to lose those, those qualifiers? It was a hugely disappointing time because the, the, we, the potential of the team was better than the results that we got and we had it in our hands. So uh, take full responsibility for that as a management team. I think we were playing against a team that were 15 or 16 games into their season. So it's not an excuse, it's a fact. So hopefully they don't get that type of draw again because naturally we had the overhang of some suspensions from the year before and one or two players not returning because of international duty and whatnot. So we wasn't in a fantastic place, but we still had enough to win that game. I think that's clear. We said it at the time. We stand by that. Um, and so, yeah, it was disappointing this year. Um, it's disappointing they're not going in direct, but you'd have to say with the form that they've shown in Europe the last three or four years, I think I worked out it was about the 64th game in Europe that they played when they got to the final over three and a half, four years. That's an unbelievable amount for a player to have played. Someone like Goldson's probably played all of them. If you've got that amount of appearances in your career in Europe. So in the Europa League sort of Champions League qualifying level, which is Europa League level, really, they're a very, very experienced squad at that level. You know, the team that got done well in Europe this year is a very, very experienced team. If you looked at the other teams in the Europa League and the appearances per player, Rangers were a very, very experienced team. And therefore, they feel comfortable at that level. And, they've, and they're impressing themselves. And I'll be cheering them on again when the qualifiers come out. And I, and I, I've got a feeling they'll qualify this year.